Hey guys, Marco here from Aviero Life CS. Hope you are doing well. Welcome back to my channel. And first of all, I want to apologize for not being able to upload videos in the last month. I've been busy doing training, flying, but now I'm all finished and we have time to continue reviewing the Boeing 737 systems. So today we're going to talk about landing gear. And what we are going to review today is system limitations, system overview, and controls and indicators. So let's start with the system limitations. And remember, we can find this in FCOM volume one. Airplanes operating with EASA certification, towing operations without the use of a tow bar is restricted to tow vehicles that are designed and operated to preclude damage to the airplane steering system, or which provide a reliable and unmistakable warning when damage to the steering system may be have occurred. Non-AFM operation information, it says, do not apply brakes until after touchdown. And here you can see the placard for the speeds for the landing gear operating Extend 270 knots or Mach 82, retract 235 knots, extended 320 knots, Mach 82. Now let's talk about a system overview. And it says uh, the European has two main landing gear and a single nose gear. Each main gear is a conventional two wheel landing gear unit. The nose gear is a conventional steerable two-wheel unit. So you can see pictures of both here. Hydraulic power for the traction, extension, and nose wheel steering is normally supplied by hydraulic system A. A manual landing gear extension system and an alternate source of hydraulic power for nose wheel steering are also provided. And remember, we already talked about the hydraulic system. So if you want to review it, I will leave a link here in the corner so you can go and check it out. Uh, the normal brake system is powered by hydraulic system B. The alternate brake system is powered by hydraulic system A. And your skid protection is provided on both brake systems, but the auto brake system is available only with the normal brake system. Now let's go and talk about controls and indicators. Here we have the landing gear panel, number one, Landing gear indicator lights, top, you can see them here. Illuminated red, landing gear is not down and locked with either or both forward thrust levers retarded to idle and below 800 feet AGL. Related landing gear is in disagreement with landing gear lever position in transit or unsafe. Extinguished landing gear is up and locked with landing gear lever up or off. Landing gear is down and locked with the landing gear lever down. Number two, we have the landing gear indicator lights on the bottom ones, illuminated green, related gear down and locked. Note, landing gear warning horn is deactivated with all gear down and locked. Other note here, it says landing gear is down and locked as long as one green landing gear indicator light in the center panel or overhead panel for each gear is illuminated. Extinguished, landing gear is not down and locked. Number three is the landing gear lever in the up position, landing gear retract. In the off position, hydraulic pressure is removed from landing gear system in the down position, landing gear extend. Number four, we have the override trigger, allows landing gear lever to be raised, bypassing the landing gear lever lock. Number five, we already talked about it, the landing gear limit the speed placard, indicates maximum speed while operating landing gear and after gear extension. This uh, video out here, for you to see how the landing gear operates. So you can see the gear coming down, 
now is down and locked. We have the three green lights. Now, if we can, uh, if we want to retract it, here is going up, and you will see this light extinguishing. There you go. And then we release the hydraulic pressure when we put it in the off position. Now let's continue with the landing gear indicator lights. And this is a redundant but separate set of landing gear indicator circuits and lights. It's located in the aft overhead panel. It's right there. Landing gear indicator lights, the overhead panel, illuminated green, related gear down and locked. And we have the same notes that we read before. Extinguished, landing gear is not down and locked. Now, if we talk about the manual gear extension, uh, this is located in the flight deck floor, and uh, you can see an actual picture here. It says uh, right main, nose, left main. Uh, let's see what we have here. Number one is the manual extension access door. You can see it here. Open, manual landing gear extension is possible with landing gear lever in any position. Normal landing gear extension is still possible, if hydraulic system A pressure is available, landing gear retraction is disabled. And this is important to remember. When you close that door, landing gear operate normally. Number two here, we have the manual gear extension handles, right main, nose, left main. Each landing gear up lock is released when related handle is pulled to its limit, approximately 24 inches, which is 61 centimeters. Now we have the auto brake and anti skid controls uh, located in the center forward panel. And you can see an actual picture here. And again, thanks to uh, Dream Aero for allowing me to uh, take these pictures in the simulator and the videos. We'll continue here. Number one auto brake disarm light, illuminated amber. A speed brake lever moved to down the tent during RTO, which is a rejected takeoff, or landing. Manual brakes applied during RTO or landing. Thrust levers advanced during RTO or landing, except during first three seconds after touchdown for landing. Landing made with RTO selected. RTO mode selected on ground. Illuminates for one to two seconds, then extinguishes. A malfunction exists in automatic brake system. When this light is extinguished, auto brake select switch set to off, auto brake armed. Number two, we have the auto brake select switch. As you can see, we have different positions here. The off position auto brake system is deactivated. One, two, three, or max. Select desired deceleration rate for landing. Switch must be pulled out to select max deceleration. RTO here automatically applies maximum brake pressure when thrust levers are retarded to idle at or above 90 knots. Number three is the anti skidding knob light, illuminated amber. A system fault is detected by the anti skid monitoring system. Extinguished anti skid system operating normally. Now, if we talk about the parking brake, and here you have two options uh, different models of airplanes. Uh, number one is the parking brake lever. Forward parking brakes released. Aft. Sets parking brakes when either captains or first officers' brake pedals are fully depressed. Number two, we have the parking brake warning light, illuminated in red. Parking brake is set. Light operates from battery power. Extinguished. Parking brake is released. And uh, here we can check this video how to set the parking brake. There. You press the pedals, you see the light coming on when you move the lever. So let's talk about the hydraulic brake pressure indicator. Indicates brake accumulator pressure. Normal pressure is 3,000 PSI. Maximum pressure is 3,500 PSI. Normal pre-charge is 1,000 PSI. The rotor and brake pedals 
you can see in each crew station we have this and uh, in this picture you can see them number one if the rudder brake pedals push full pedal turns nose wheel up to seven degrees in either direction push top of pedal only activates wheel brakes number two is the rudder pedal adjustment crank aft counterclockwise adjust rudder pedals aft forward clockwise adjust rudder pedals forward the nose wheel steering switch is located in the left forward panel. We have two positions here, alternate and normal. In the alternate hydraulic system B provides power for nose wheel steering. In the normal position, which is the guarded position, hydraulic system A provides power for nose wheel steering. Now let's see this uh, video here for you to see how it works. So we leave the guard and we select alternate. And once we close the guard, it goes back to the normal position. The nose wheel is steering wheel. This is the wheel here. And if you rotate it, turns nose wheel up to 78 degrees in either direction. Overrides rudder pedal steering. We have the nose wheel steering indicator here, left, indicates nose wheel steering displacement left of center position and now we have center position normal straight ahead position right indicates nose wheel steering displacement right of center position so if we watch this video here to see how it operates it's very simple turning left remember 78 degrees right and go back to center so with this one guys, we finish today's video about the landing gear. I hope you liked it. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. And if you are not subscribed to my channel yet, please do it now. And if you believe these videos could be useful for somebody else, please share them. And that's going to help me a lot to grow the channel. Next week, we will continue talking about the landing gear. Until then guys, please take care and hope to see you soon.